I think we're ready tonight. We're going to talk about writing a family history that others want to read. This is a this is a fun class. I think you'll find a lot of good information from it, and uh, hopefully the information will help you in your writing. And that's kind of the focus this time is writing. Um, you've got on your handout all of the stuff that's on the slides, and so plus a little bit extra, so you don't need to write down everything that's on the slides, that should hopefully will help you. And then you can just write down ideas that come to you as we, as we talk about them. Okay, one of the first things I want to talk about is that troubles teach. Uh, the idea that, that if you have a problem, it turns dry facts into a story. Um, and so don't be afraid to tell about problems or uh, situations in your family history or your personal history that were a problem that, uh, you know, a particular challenge or obstacle that had to be overcome. Tonight I'm going to share with you a couple of examples of, of what we're talking about and this is one of them. I don't know if, if someone can read that, if they'd like to read that, that would be great. Um, if not, I'll read it, but it's, um, this is just an example that of someone who wrote of how they dealt with a problem and how the uh, this one actually uses dialogue too which is a writing technique to help communicate information so does somebody want to read that or thank you for reading that um, I want you to notice a few things about this uh, I picked this story for a couple reasons I think it's a good example but also I have lymphoma and so I can relate to this um, but you'll notice that he didn't start out in, in telling about this saying uh, you know, in 2008, I had lymphoma, and I ended up having to have chemotherapy. Uh, you know, and he wasn't just stating the facts. He wasn't just going, this happened, this happened, this happened. Instead, he, he starts out with dialogue, which is an interesting way to start out, but he talks about how he felt and how his wife felt and, and some of the things that she did and others did. And then, you know, it's down here where he talks about when he actually got the lymphoma. I mean, you know, there was in 2008 and he had lymphoma. It's not till later. So you, your curiosity is peaked as you're starting to read. What, you know, what's he talking about? What, why is he feeling this way? Why is he tired at 8.30 and he's taking a Tylenol because he's had a hard day, you know? So you, you start wondering what's going on, what's going on. Those are, those are good techniques to do in your writing to help draw the reader in and help pull them along. Okay, and he's talking about a problem. I mean, having cancer is not a fun thing. That's not a pleasant thing to write about. And yet, I think this is a good example of how to handle writing, uh, you know, about something that's difficult. You know, he felt terrible. He liked to do things himself. Uh, you know, I'm a do-it-yourselfer too. And I mean, it, it would hurt me to have to pay a handyman to do something that I could just easily do. And yet, here because of the situation he's in. That's what he did, and that's how he expressed that helplessness. He didn't say, I was just tired all the time and couldn't do anything. He didn't say it that way. He instead used an example of having to call a handyman, you know, his wife having to call a handyman when something needed to be done. Okay. Um, now I'm going to talk about some ways to use as we, you know, are writing our history to help to help add interest to it. One of the things to do is to make lists of things. This helps us to think of all the different aspects of our life that we want to write about or our, you know, whoever we're writing about, our ancestor or, our, you know, family. We, we can write these lists and, and these are some good things, a list of things to do. So you've got people, places, lists of stories that you want to include, you know, cars, houses, hobbies, church callings, Turning points. Turning points are a great thing to include in your history. You know, for instance, you, you know, you were going to school, uh, college somewhere, and you were going to major in elementary education. And that was what your desire was all up until then. And then you were either registering for a class or you were um, in your first semester there and you were visiting with somebody and somebody was so passionate and excited about you know, being an engineer or something, and, and all of a sudden, because of that passion and that enlightenment, 
you decide to change your whole career. It was a turning point in your life. And so you change your whole education and change your career. And so these turning points are great things to include in a, in a history. So then you, take, then you take those lists and then you transfer them to a timeline. And on that timeline you have three separate columns. So you have the date that the event happened or, you know, like the time when you got this certain toy, you know, the date. And then you have what the event was, that you got the toy, and then the idea of the timeline is to add this last column, this historical events that surround that. So you look, you know, you go online and you look to see what was happening historically about, you know, that time. Because what that does is it, then you can say, okay, that's going to add a little bit of a flavor to it. I'm going to include some historical information, what was happening then, that affected the way I felt about this particular thing. So, you know, for instance, you know, if you got a, a toy that was, a, you know, maybe a G.I. Joe set or, you know, an army set, and it happened during one of the world wars, and that was part of why that toy was so uh, emotionally attaching to you. And, and because of the historical events that were going on, or something else happened when, you know, when JFK was shot, you know, something else was going on in your life at that time, and that those events tied or had, a, had an effect on those events in your life. The next thing you want to do is to, you know, pick the easiest story that you want to write. Okay, whatever is the easiest story for you to write. Start with the easiest. Don't start with the first one. Don't start with the most important necessarily. Start with whichever one you think is the easiest story to write. And then you want to think about, okay, what's, you know, what's surrounding this story? You know, what are, what's the setting? What, are the what was the clothing that people wore then? What was the conversations that happened during this time? The feelings, what people were involved. And if it's helpful, even draw a picture of what was happening. The idea being that you take all of this not just what happened, but all these things that surround what happened, and, and then it will come to life more as you imagine and think about it when you start to write about it. And then you just start writing so that, they, so that somebody else can picture all of those things. And you can include the feelings, you know, of what so-and-so had or what you had. You can include some of the setting, if it's appropriate, and you start writing it. So, here's another example that, uh, that if somebody can read that would be great, of how somebody uses some good writing techniques in um, talking about different people when she was a child. You can picture it in your mind as you're reading that, can't you? That's, that's the objective, that's what you want to have happen. And, and you notice the way it works is the, w the order of the story. So she starts with, you know, describing the neighbor, and then a little bit about her, and then, and then she talks about her husband, and, and then she gets to the point, okay, she's giving you just a little bit of a who's who, and then she tells the story about her husband, who's the grocer, and he dishes out this milk <laughs> with the ash from the cigar, you know, and, and her concern, you get... You get I was sure. In other words, this, these are her thoughts. I was sure that the ash was going to fall in. And, and every time I looked at that blackened finger, you know, it just made me sick. And so you get a feel for it. So that, that's what you're trying to do. That, that adds the life to the story. That's what makes it interesting. Okay. Um, the next point you want to do when you're writing your, your stories is to write without stopping. You want to you just pick a time. You know, if, if you like to write early in the morning, write early in the morning. If you like to write late at night, you know, some people like to write at night. I like to write in the morning. That's my better time to concentrate. And so pick a time, and then you just write. And don't worry about spelling, grammar, you know, order, anything. Don't try and edit it. Don't try to, you know, go back and correct yourselves. Just write it. And when I do this, I like to do it with paper and pencil rather than a computer. For me, it works better. Whatever works for you, use that method. But the idea is to get the story from inside of you onto paper or into the computer. If you do write it out on paper on that initial one, 
then you go back and transcribe that in the computer. You put that into the computer and then you can start editing it. So you want to get it all out first and not worry about editing because it'll come out a lot better that way. You're going to get a lot of more of the information. You're going to get a lot more of the feelings and the thoughts. If you just let it pour out as it just comes, don't worry about the order of it. And then you go back and massage it. Then you go back and edit it. Then you can go back and work it over and over and over. That, that's that's a, a good clue for um, good writing techniques. And then, as you're editing it, you want to include. You want to include, what was the setting? Okay, what, what, you know, where, where was this? And who are the characters? Who's involved? You know, was Uncle Bill and Aunt Lois there? You know, or, you know was it your, your cousins there? You know, who's, who's involved? And then, and then the plot. In other words, what happened? That's the plot. What, what was it that happened? You want to make sure and include that. So you don't want to just talk about the, who was there and not say what happened. You want to, that's the main meat of it, is the plot. And then these last two points, the why and the meaning to you. Those are probably the most important things to include, and that's probably often the ones that get left out. If you include what it meant to you or it meant to your ancestor, if you're writing about them, or you know why you did a, did it a certain way, you know you you made a certain decision. You know maybe you were at college and you made that decision to change from elementary education to mechanical engineering. Why did you do that? Not just the turning point of that happening, but why was it that you did that? You want to include the whys. And, and what your feelings were and what your thought process was. As you include that, it, it draws the reader in and it also helps the reader to make sense of why you chose what you chose. And, and that doesn't mean that they have to have chosen the same thing. It just means that they now understand better why you chose what you chose.